Hi everyone out there, my name is Devin Adams. I am a Fortinet trainer over here in Tempe, Arizona with Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants. Anyways, uh, in this video series, I am going to do a quick demo on Fortinet's single sign-on solution for their FortiGates. So uh, this is not going to be super in-depth, right? Uh, but I, I know that in class sometimes it can get a little confusing because there's so much already done for us behind the scenes. And uh, from here, we're going to essentially go from uh, beginning to end. So let's talk about our goals for this video. So we're going to download and install the collector agent and install it. All right, so that's going to be our first goal. And the whole point of this, let me hop onto my, my domain controller here, is we essentially have a network where there is a Windows domain, right? So there's a domain controller, Windows machine, so on and so forth. And in my previous videos, I've used this poor laptopology to death. By the way, this is it. This, this lab's getting destroyed after this. Um, <laughs> it's just getting way too messy. Uh, but essentially, you know, uh, our Linux guy from the basement, from previous videos, right? Remember how he had a completely different uh, uh, route out to the internet? Well, he just loves his Linux, and he came up and, and plugged it directly into the switch, and, you know, without any kind of uh, authenticating, right? All right. He can essentially just, yeah, access the internet all he wants. So let's just go to a. Uh, and by the way, I'm doing deep inspection there, and that's why it's barking at him. Uh, but essentially, uh, uh, he can surf the web. So in fact, let me just fix that right now. That was in a previous video that I did, um, signing certs and all that jazz. But if you notice here on our firewall, I mean, there really isn't any authentication going on. So anyone can come down here and essentially access the internet so uh, let me take off these these profiles for right now just because they're not a part of the lab all right so there we go and now uh, our friend here should be able to <laughs> surf the web all he wants um, and we don't want that we only want Windows users to be able to access the the internet here hello world all right so boo okay so that is going to be our goal. So uh, before we do this, we have to download the collector agent, which is essentially going to collect the logins from the domain controller. And uh, you can put that collector agent on any machine in your Windows environment, just as long as it has rights to read log files from the domain controller. And also, uh, as it collects the logs in the groups, it's going to pass it to the FortiGate. So when an IP comes through, it's going to match that IP address with the user that it has been collected and depending on their group membership they are going to be allowed through or not so that is going to be our other goals here is to configure that collector agent right and FortiGate for FSSO then review and create the groups and then test them by applying them to our firewall policies so um, all right so let's get our domain controller up okay here we go and let's go download that collector agent so uh, you're gonna have to need you're gonna have to need you're gonna need a support uh, uh, license from Fortinet all right so but we go to their website here okay uh, you put in your super secret credentials so everyone I need you to to look away for a moment as I log in ha 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 all right it's funny every time not really um, yay 40 OS 6. I haven't even gotten used to 5, 6 yet. Okay, so download and let's go to firmware images. All right, and then you're going to match the model of FortiGate that you're on. So let's go to download, and I am currently using 5.4. All right, uh, specifically 5.4.3. So here is FSSO. Okay, and there's a couple of things going on here. Uh, so there's different agents for different types of single sign-on solutions, okay? Uh, for us, we are going to use the collector agent. Let's see here, 64-bit. All right. Let's get that bad boy. 
And just in case we need it, let's do the DC agent setup. And we talked a little bit about that in class. So essentially you can have the collector mode do all the work. You can have the, um, the DC participate in it. Here we're going to have the collector do all the work. And I, I'm not going to go into that here, but um, hopefully that makes sense from our class. So, but here we go. We are going to install the collector agents, which is going to grab the logins from the domain controller. So we're going to hit next. We're going to accept. All right. Now we're going to put in our our admin stuff here. So we need to be a local user account. So let's go ahead and use our admin password. All right. Now here it's asking us, do you want to use a standard mode or advanced mode? So depending on the depth of your domain, you might need to go with advanced mode. Uh, that's going to allow LDAP queries to query the group membership. So like nested groups are supported and all that fun stuff. But here for my demo, I'm just going to do standard for simplicity. Um, I might do a demo of the advanced if I get any requests for it. Okay. Um, but let's hit next. Let's hit install. And uh, great. There you go. It is finished. Now it's going to say, hey, where is your domain controller? Well, we just happen to be on it. Now here's the catch, guys. If you are installing this on something other than a domain controller, the collector agent, I mean, you have to make sure that the collector agent listening port 8002 is open. All right. So it can talk um, to the outside world, to the FortiGate, to the DC, so on and so forth. All right. And there's also another port that we're going to see here soon. There's my domain. So I found it. We hit next. Now, this part's also important. What kind of accounts do you not want to grab, right? So we don't want to see the Kerberos one. We don't want to see the guest one. All right. We don't want to see the administrator because uh, us administrators, we log in all over the place, right? Uh, so mainly it's going to be our, our users here. Now, it looks like I didn't group them together in OUs and... Uh, that's my bad, but that's okay. Now here it's saying, do you want the DC to do work or do you just want to pull log files? I'm just going to pull log files for right now. So maybe my, my sysadmin didn't like the fact that I wanted to install a DC agent on his, on his domain controller. So <laughs> I don't know. But let's go ahead and hit next. Looks like it's working there. All right. Hopefully that worked. Um, let's take a look. That's kind of weird. I didn't get a I didn't get a prompt. It could still be working. Um, I record these from my my laptop, so uh, it's not the the fastest thing in the world. But if you go to your start menu now on your on your machine that you installed this, there's a configure the Fortinet single sign on, and this is where all the magic happens. All right. So for starters, if we had a DC agent, remember how I told you that eight zero zero two needs to be punched through. All right. So you'd have to go to your Windows firewall and turn that on or off. In fact, I'm going to do that right now just to make sure um, that our firewall here is, is done. All right. And then also the FortiGate needs to be, be talking. So I actually have my firewall turned off. That's fine for right now. But you'd have to go to the inbound rules and you have to open up 8002. And the outborn rules, you'd have to open up 8002 and 8000. So um, just throwing that out there to you guys in case you have some problems later on. All right, talking to the DC agent, if you're using a DC agent, or if you are not being able to talk to your FortiGate. So um, also right here is pretty important because this is going to be the pre-shared key between the FortiGate and the collector agent. All right, so I'll hit apply there. And before I go any further, I'm going to take a moment and take a look at at the groups that are configured. I know I said I was going to do that later on, but uh, the next step is going to be to to filter out the groups that are not relative. Um, so I'm going to go to my computer and users. Okay. And if you guys are not familiar with Active Directory, uh, I definitely suggest you guys uh, get your admins involved, so on and so forth. They can help you out here. So I just created users in their regular uh, user container, not best practice. So, um, okay, 
let's go ahead and fix that up now. So I'm going to just make a new quick OU. I'm going to call it something like sales. Okay. And I'm going to do another one here that says something like, um, I don't know. Uh, oh, new OU. We need at least two groups or something like that. Or um, uh, we'll say uh, AD admins or something like that. So, all right. And now I can go ahead and I can take uh, Matt here. And I'll put him a part of the sales OU. And I'll take Artie here. And I'll put him as an admin. Heck, we'll put Eugene also as a, as a sales guy, right? And then I have to come in here and actually assign them to groups. So I'll just make a new group real quick. And I'll call this sales, right? And then I can go here. I can say add to group. What group to add? Sales, all right. Now Matt's a part of the sales group. And now add to group. Eugene is part of the sales group. Now remember, the reason why groups are important because when the IP address comes through, right, we're going to pass that group membership to the FortiGates and say, hey, they're a part of the sales group, right? So we can make a, a uh, an FSSO group that says sales, and it should pass it along. And just for completeness, I'm going to make a, a new group. Let's see here. New group. There we go. I'll call it AD admins because he's one of our Windows guys. And I'll add him in that. AD admins. Yay. OK, there we go. So now, <laughs> now back to our regularly scheduled program. Uh, when we set the group filters here, I don't want to see all those groups that are made automatically, those service groups, so on and so forth, domain users, so on and so forth. So I am just going to add in the groups that I want to see. And that's one of the big reasons to use the collector, because it will filter it from the collector side, so the FortiGate doesn't have to do it. Uh, so I'm going to say set default filter, because you can do that per FortiGate. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, oh, advanced here. See how I get a little tree? And I can scroll down and be like AD admins, right? Uh, where's my sales? And sales groups are the two that I'm going to be using for FSSO. I'm going to hit OK. All right. And I usually leave this up while I'm doing my initial configuration also, guys. Um, you can close it once you confirm everything's working. So if we hit show monitored DC, you will see that it did find the domain controller and also show logged on users. So we have the admin here, but if you notice, Matt's computer wasn't, and that's because of the domain controller when I logged in this PC right here, he was not, uh, the domain controller wasn't turned on. So we're gonna have to re-log in one of our guys to see him here. But before we do that, let's get the FortiGate um, talking. Because if you can see here, okay, that's weird. I must have already configured the FortiGate <laughs> because there it is. Uh, that shouldn't have showed up yet. I'm that good, guys. Uh, let's see how that happened, okay? That was really, really scary. I must have had it configured already in an earlier lab. Um, but let's go to our FortiGate, which I called Firewall 1. You guys see no cert errors there? Dun, dun, dun. Anyways. All right, <laughs> all right, here we go. So let's go to our users and devices. All right, let's go to our single sign-on. And I guess I created this earlier. I, w I didn't even know I did that. So I'm gonna pretend like that was never there, okay? All right, so, but um, once again, guys, so now that we have the collector set up, we need to get it talking to the FortiGate. So let's go to create new. Uh, we're going to give it a single sign-on agent, all right? And we're going to call this just DC1 collector. And we're going to type in that password. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Type in the IP address, <laughs> okay, that the collector lives on. And then the super secret key, as you guys can almost see me typing there, it was... Uh, it was password, but that we can use that for a, a training facility or a training example. 
Also, guys, uh, you can have multiple ones, too, for redundancy. There's a lot of scaling that you can do with this. But let's hit Apply and Refresh. And what we're shooting for here is essentially for our LDAP server to show up. And it does take a couple of clicks to get that talking. All right. All right, there we go. But once you see the groups that you filtered out, right, you know that it's working. So we're going to hit OK. So there we go. Cha-ching, right? And now we can start using these in our policies. So I'm going to end the video there for right now. I'll split up the next video into a different one just for the, the sake of length. But when we get back in our next video, we are going to sign someone in, right? We are going to recognize their login has been passed to the FortiGate and then start using it in firewall policies. So all right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.